All right, what's up, y'all? It's like a fan here. As I'm about to title today's video, we're here to talk about my expectations for the 3v3 meta in NBA 2K23. So, in today's video, we're giving my expectations on what it's going to be like as far as the point guard, lockdown, and big position, right? And how all those intertwine. Because obviously, your big man position is kind of intertwined with what your point guard is. Your big man position is also kind of intertwined with what your lockdown position is. Because if you want to go out here playing sides and expect to do that, you cannot be an oversized center because then you're going to struggle to guard those guards if your lockdown is expecting you to be able to play sides with him. Or if your lockdown is six foot five and like a very small end lockdown, you're going to obviously be more okay with being a tall big because then you can play backside hedge defense more. Dude's going to fight through screens. Same with if your guard has zero finishing. You're going to be way more okay with making an inside center whereas if your guard does have finishing it'd probably be worth for you to make a popper type build so all of this is going to kind of be impacted and the first start of the chain is what can you make at the point guard position so i hope you all enjoyed the video if you do for to drop a like sub if you're new turn on the noties all good stuff and like i said <laughs> i don't know i don't know what to expect for likes anymore let's shoot for 3,000 in the first 24 hours it's probably good enough maybe i'm even still underselling it anyway but again we're just here to talk about my expectations, how the game's going to be like, what to expect. In this file right here, you're going to see this build is not what I'm trying to upgrade by any means. It's it's a test to build. It's just to see badge caps, pretty much. Simple as that. So, as you can see, badge requirements VOD. It was nothing to do with, oh, this build's good. This build's going to be like, no, this build is garbage, obviously, as you can see. So, pay no mind. I'm just here for the badge requirements. Now, as far as a guard... I think what you're gonna see a lot of people do is make something between six two six three. I I was originally thinking six foot because it was what was gonna give you the max speed with ball, ball handle, three pointer, and it's what all the cheese heads were gonna do, right? But I think a lot of them are coming back to earth and understanding that you cannot have 99 three pointer and 99 speed with ball and and 99 ball handle. And for that matter, even if you do try and max those three things out, you're gonna have like zero on anything to do with anything else, probably even physicals too. So. It's impossible. So you're going to see a lot of people probably come back down to earth. I'm, I'm going to go back to the shooting first because the shooting was one that I definitely like 100% know what people are going to do. So as you can see, Agent 3 is going to be for gold. You can get it at 89. Blinders as well. You can get a pretty solid level at 89 three-pointer. Limitless range, however, is 92. And I think this is the cutoff you're going to see a lot of people go for. 92 three-pointer is looking exactly like what a lot of these guards are going to do. Now, if someone somehow comes out here with 99 three-pointer, I will be flabbergasted. I won't believe it. And if they do, that means their ball handling speed with ball are probably like absolutely in the basement. Like I'm talking 80s and stuff like that. And if at that point, if you're an actual like point guard, like a stage point guard, so to say, or a 3v3 point guard, I don't know how you're going to do that personally. Because you're probably going to be somewhere around like, like I said, six foot to six foot three, something like that. Now, let me just tell you, if you're a casual, like you're someone who is not, you know, playing stage or anything like that, or, or even for that matter, like maybe you're someone who doesn't take parks seriously. Honestly, I think you come out here with anything at the point guard position. This game is going to be extremely versatile for 3v3. You could probably bring any lineup out here and I think you'll be good because to be, to tell the truth, if you're not that great at the game, I think a taller point guard build probably would be good. I, I honestly don't think you should make a six foot to like six foot four type build. Now, I will say the SIGs definitely de depend because you have to be 6'4 or below to be able to get some of the guard SIGs. But personally, if you're just the guy that likes to play by ball movement and just get the guy, get the open guy, drive and kick type stuff and just, you know, play by that logic, I honestly think, like I said, you could maybe come out with like a 6'7", six 6'8 six point guard, whatever you want to do, really. I truly do believe that. So just keep that in mind when I go on with the rest of this video, because most of the video that I'm talking about here is for the comp heads. It's for the people who want to sweat really hard and what the stage meta will be, so to say. And I don't know if that drives away some viewership. And honestly, if you want to stick around and listen for like lockdown type builds or even like centers and stuff, I think that definitely still fits the casuals 100%. But again, just to stay on the topic of like the comp dudes and what fits certain thresholds and what they're going to do. Like, and honestly, even if you are a casual, this is something to look out for too, because you're going to be playing against these types of people as well. The ones that are going to be the little like comp heads and stuff. So anyway, 92 three pointer, like I said, it's going to give you gold for the limitless range right here. And I think that's what a lot of people are going to target as well. You get gold dead eye for having the 92, you get a 91 as well. And all of those badges are the extremely important ones. Now you can't run them all at the same time. There's no freaking way at all, <laughs> like literally zero way. And then Green Machine as well, as you can see, Hall of Fame, 91 three-pointer. So 92 is seeming very, very legit as far as like what people are gonna shoot for. Same with Guard Up, 93 pointer is required for it and nothing more than that. So the only thing that you get for going more than 92 three-pointer is gonna be Limitless on, Limitless on Hall of Fame, Blinders on Hall of Fame, 
and Agent 3 on Hall of Fame, and obviously Deadeye on Hall of Fame too. So, I understand you're probably like, well, Laker, I do want those on Hall of Fame. Well, too bad, because you're going to be a horrible build if you have 99 three-pointer, all right? You're going to literally be a Pierce Sharp, and you know what Pierce Sharps do with the ball in their hand? They move really slow. Like, that's literally what 2K18-19 style Pierce Sharps were doing, and that's what it looks like in this game too if you want to be a Pierce Sharp. So, suck it up, because it's going to be really bad. Now, as far as the ball handle goes, they're not going to settle for less than 94 ball handle in the gold handles for days. There's absolutely zero way these guards come out here with less than 94 because they're not going to rock silver handles for days. There's zero way they're doing that. So I do want to mention too, though, there's no freaking way they're getting 99 ball handle either. So keep that in mind. Mismatch Expert is also going to be around that range too for the gold. So again, I think they're only getting gold Mismatch Expert and same with Killer Combos. I think they're only getting gold Killer Combos. So expect that... If you're making a play shot type build, you're definitely only going to get gold in these tier threes. You're not going to get a freaking Hall of Fame badge at all. It just doesn't work like that. <laughs> all right. So like with that shooting stuff, you're not getting those Hall of Fame tier threes. With the playmaking, you're not getting Hall of Fame tier threes unless you're really struggling in one of the other two categories. For unpluckable, as you can see, gold is going to be very easy to get with 84. You can get it Hall of Fame unlocked at 95. So this is where I think some people might go 95 with the handles for days being 94. Really, you're already right there. Maybe you go one more just to get that Hall of Fame Unpluckable unlocked. And just in case, like, Pluck Steel start going crazy and you need to protect yourself. I don't think it's even worth running on Hall of Fame from where I'm expecting the game will be, though, as far as, like, how it works. But anyway, quick first step, very easy to achieve, as you can see. You're going to get this no matter what, really, like, cake. It only requires 89 ball handle and 88 speed with ball. So, and that's or you can have either of them so really it's very doable and then for most of the tier one badges it's really not important i think maybe ankle breaker is worth but anyway we've spent a lot of time on the point guard i think i've got my point across that like really you can make any style you want here but it's going to depend on your teammates quite a bit and that's always something to keep in mind when it comes to the threes meta is going to be you have to have a cohesive lineup and if you're playing with randoms and you want a build that can maybe carry like i said Maybe that six foot three to six foot four range is what you need if you're really a really like skilled point guard. But if you're maybe a random who is gonna hop on there and not and I apologize for saying randoms too, because I don't mean to mean it I don't mean it like that, but you guys get what I'm saying. Like for people who play with randoms, that's just what to expect. I mean, honestly, if you're someone that doesn't stand out and you're not gonna go crazy on the sticks, I think probably if you're making like a point guard build, maybe more like six foot seven, and you could be a little bit more of a distributor. You can be still a pretty good ball handler, but not any elite level. All right, so as for the lockdown position, and I'm kind of realizing as well as we're gonna go further in this video, I've already made build videos showcasing, for instance, the six foot five and talking about what six foot six and seven and eight and nine are gonna look like and how usable they are. Same with I've already shown the big man builds and stuff like that too, what I'm expecting they're gonna do. So I'm gonna go into the rest of this video, assuming you guys have already watched those videos and know what I'm talking about. If you don't, don't feel free to check them out because you can definitely just get more informed and maybe go to those videos first then come back to this because I don't got I don't want to make like 50 minute long videos and go on and on about stuff people have already heard from me when really you could just watch the video as well so anyway as far as my impressions as how this meta stuff is gonna go for the locks for park I I truly do believe that low-key taller bigs might become more important on a defensive aspect of things because you're gonna see some people come out here and maybe struggle at their point guard position and they're gonna dump that thing down to the big man very often and and some of these guys are gonna come out here with like probably the seven footers I think the seven footers are looking souped they're looking crazy and truthfully like if you come out here with a six foot eight or a six foot seven at the big man position like at the three expecting that you're gonna need to play like crazy high hedge D and like sides and stuff like that I'm not gonna lie you might not need to so for the casuals, I definitely do believe seven footers and above are going to be what's really good in park for the three, uh, like as in the big man, essentially. And what does that mean for the lockdowns? If you have a super tall big man on the backside, like I said in the intro, I think six foot fives and like builds like this are going to eat and rule off that because then you can fight through the screens and be more of a fight through lock. Now, let's talk about like the on ball aspect of it and maybe not screens quite as much because obviously that's still a factor too. So like for instance, I, I saw a couple of people talking about masher, or not masher, but bully where essentially, you know, they're like, oh, well, six foot five with that level of strength right there is definitely not going to be able to hold those dudes with like bully and just going super crazy on slashing. I'm telling you guys right now, a versatile point guard build is going to be so extremely brain wreckingly hard to make like you cannot make a build like i saw uncle demi's john moran build and it had like 
like 75 three pointer or something like that, or like 80 three pointer, whatever the case was. And it had like pretty solid speed with ball and ball handle, but then it had like literally zero defense. It had like pretty okay, good finishing, but like the finishing badges were still gonna be hard to put on. And then the physicals were like mediocre as well. I mean, at that point, he was like 6'2, six, 6'3, six, and it was trying to be, you know, John Morant style, but you're not like extremely fast or anything with your physicals. So, truthfully, I really do think. You, the last thing you have to worry about is people running like mashings type stuff. And honestly, even at that point, you could probably get your big man on him <laughs> if that's the case. You could probably throw your big man on him and he's going to struggle. Or your big could drop off the corner more if they're just running five, like three out ISO style stuff. Or honestly, you could just rotate as well. If you get beat on the drive, you can rotate to the shooter who's in the corner or anything like that. So personally, I'm not investing a whole lot into defending rim running mashers and stuff like that on threes. Cause at the end of the day, three V like in three V three, three pointers rule. And that's just how it is. It might be hard to get them 100%, but that drive and kick stuff. And don't be wrong. That's part of the play style that I'm talking about. Like if you are a slashing like guard, obviously the drive and kick creates those three pointers as well. So I understand everything. I just think personally, six of five locks are going to be really, really good at fighting through those screens. And it's, it's going to allow you to have a taller big personally, which in my opinion is more important. You'll be able to get like really good rebounding, really good size, really good help off the corners and stuff like that. And to have a big is more important than having a big lock, if you ask me. But at the same time, I do want to mention to you guys, six foot seven, six foot six, eight, stuff like that. It still looks pretty good. It still looks like you can definitely guard people with it. And if you're going to be playing as like a part casual, I think truly six foot sevens and six foot eights could defend the people who aren't like absolute dribble gods, even if you have a horrible backside defender who's not very fast. If he's like, if you're playing with a random who's at center and he's like seven foot three and not stepping up on screens at all, <laughs> uh, my boy AK says he's making ramen noodles down there <laughs> in the paint. <laughs> And just not stepping up at all and pretty much i'm saying i still think you can deal with that when it's playing at a casual level i think there's truly not gonna be a lot of like dribble god point guards out here and it's not gonna be like 21 and 22 next gen or current gen on 21 and like dudes just speed boost glitching and banging every white they shoot i truly do believe the point guard position is going to take a lot of skill so i think you get away potentially with making a six foot seven or six foot eight lock and dealing with those rim runners a little bit more so that's my impressions on the 3v3 meta personally i know i'm not showing a lot of cool fun footage or anything right here but this is business i'm talking to you guys about like what to make for your build to save you money stuff like that what to expect as far as the gameplay meta goes what to expect because truly all of this meta stuff that i talk about and i know there's cornballs out there talking about like oh meta this meta that make the freaking build you want bro listen I'm trying to save you guys money. I'm trying to save you time and I'm trying to save you like just the effort lost <laughs> in in trying to play around with this builder because truly there are intertwining things that make for this quote unquote meta and even though I haven't seen a single person play in park or anything like that on the 3v3, I can still interpret what the point guard looks like, what the lockdown looks like, and what the centers look like, and how to intertwine their styles the best based on what their ratings and badges look like in the builder, and based on how they're going to work together by just the attribute budgeting that you can even do on a build. And as y'all can tell, like, I'm not making a lot of cuts in this. I am very informed with, like, and passionate about what I'm thinking with this sort of information right here. So, Truthfully, I really do think this is good information, good news, and as far as like threes, I do think that poppers are going to be pretty like valid. I think you, you could, uh, yeah, we haven't even talked about the big man position. Let me let me talk about the bigs a little bit. All right, so what I want to do is maybe show the maxes and stuff like that of what you can do for each build. So for instance, seven foot threes are extremely slow. Like I said, they're going to be they're going to be cooking those ramen noodles down there in the paint and not helping on screens at all. They're not stepping up. They're not doing anything like that. <laughs> uh, I, I think that you actually have to, as you can see, max the wingspan three more inches, and then you even have to upgrade the weight a little bit to be able to get the max rebounding. So I think 50 57 speed like as in 99 rebounding I, I think 57 speed is the max you can have for a seven foot three while still having that rebound chaser in hall of fame i will say they're going to dominate the rebounding obviously and if you're if you're someone that plays with like a bum point guard like he's really really bad on this game and you're expecting that he's not going to be very good honestly a seven foot three can bail them out because whether it's offensive rebounds or it's just the paint mashing style of dominating down there and just being a, a hard dude to guard especially for some of these dudes that are going to come out with like seven foot and below builds at the three you could definitely def like dominate them in an aspect not to mention i do want to say too it's very unlikely but if you are playing someone that's requiring a whole lot of help maybe this is very unlikely but maybe 
your point guard is good enough at defense to the point where you as the seven foot three can guard the corner stay out of the action and then your point guard and lockdown can kind of play like guard sides quote unquote where you're giving up free twos and taking away the three pointer and then relying on your seven foot three to be gigantic and just take up a lot of space and play play halvesies pretty much off the corner in the paint make the point guard make decisions and make him make passes essentially so it is possible that seven foot threes are viable usable in the park i'm not betting on it though personally in my opinion i believe a build more like this like the seven footer that i was showcasing is going to be what truly does get used because it can be used in many different ways it can be a good hedge defender it can still be a good rebounder it can still be a good masher it can still get driving dunks as well it's a fun build to use as well i must mention as well and i think it's so versatile i think it's so good so this to me is the like definite meta as far as the big man position goes whether you want to upgrade the three-pointer on it or not honestly that's up to you it's going to be extremely hard to do though with the budgeting of it but that's my impressions how it all goes together how the locks pair with the bigs how the bigs pair with the guards how the guards pair with the bigs stuff like that that's my impression i hope you all enjoyed the video if you did for to drop a like sub if you do turn on the notice all that good stuff like i said in the intro let's try this one to like two three thousand likes in the first 24 hours really appreciate it and stay tuned for the content when the when the actual release comes i'm looking forward to like diversifying the content a little bit I'm, I'm gonna be able to play the game a whole lot more because i was able to get this early access footage and be able to make these build videos and stuff so anyway i'm excited i'm looking forward to it if you made it to the end of the video put threes in the comments search purchase all the way through None of that. I hope you all enjoyed. Stay tuned and take it easy, man. Peace.